Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to Art of Awakening. My name is Ona Christie, and today I'm going to start with a story. So about six years ago, I went down to Milwaukee for a business trip, and I was invited to go to a, a drum circle, a kind of a shamanic journey circle. And so I went, and it was the first one I'd ever been to. And I, during that 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 journey session, I had an experience where my grandfather, this was my maternal grandfather, came to me and he told me this message. He said, real warriors grow flowers. Okay, so my grandfather in life was a, a wonderful gardener and he grew these, the most beautiful roses. And so I kept that message and carried it with me in my heart. But I, you know, and occasionally it would come to me, but I think it's only just recently that this, the real meaning of his message has really come home to me. And so I'm going to, you're going to find out why in this video. Um, and so I just want to welcome you. This is the reading and energy update for June 2021. And uh, I think we have some fantastic energies here in June. And, you know, also it's going to be the month of the summer solstice, which is huge and just a, a lot of kind of exciting things happening. All right. But this is the message that I'm being asked to relay for the collective for the month of June 2021. There's a common belief in many spiritual circles these days. It's based upon lifetimes of, and lifetimes of experience. And I'm reading here, this was just a um, message from the Akash, my Akashic guardians. Okay, so this common belief is being heard a lot in spiritual circles based upon lifetimes of experience. It's not a wrong belief. It has its place and it can be a useful model at times for understanding patterns of human behaviors and for making predictions that can be useful for, for purposes of preparing for contingencies. But at this time on the planet, for many who call themselves awakened, it is an outdated idea. Again, not wrong, but in incompatible with the evolved paradigm that is birthing on the planet at this time. This concept is spiritual warfare. One hears it often. There is a spiritual war raging on the planet right now. A pitting of the forces of life against versus the forces of anti-life. And seen from a certain dimension, you can say that this is true. If you look for it, you can see evidence of this spiritual warfare everywhere around you on the planet at this time. You can see it in the polarization of society, in the manipulation of the media, in the racial tensions, and the literal warfare break, breaking out on the planet in certain areas. You can also see it in family dynamics. And if you're honest with yourself, you can identify the spiritual warfare even within your own psyche. The patterns of spiritual warfare are indeed playing out at this, on this planet, even as we speak, and yet we say to you, this war that appears as real as the solid ground beneath you in the blink of an eye can be revealed as the illusion it is dissolving before your eyes like a desert mirage. This can happen when you simply shift your perspective. From a third dimensional viewpoint, what's happening on the planet right now is crisis. From a fourth dimensional viewpoint, it is spiritual warfare. From a fifth dimensional viewpoint, it's what we're seeing is in the present the outward manifestation of a past and present belief in conflict. And we understand when we're coming from the fifth dimensional perspective that we have the creative power within us to shift that belief into one of harmony, sovereignty, and abundance. 
this is swords into plowshares, folks, and it starts right here. Thoughts create reality. Thoughts kept in mind produce after their kind. Okay, um, this is true individually. It's also true collectively. Humanity up until now has believed in warfare. It's believed in scarcity. It's believed in lack. Right, but that's changing. And recent history has proved it. Okay, so they asked me to uh, tell you a couple stories. One is when I remember this very, very clearly when I was a child, my mother telling me the story of when she was in grad school, she had a roommate from South Africa. And this person was telling her about the apartheid and the state of things in South Africa at the time. And she said to my mom, she said, this is never gonna end without bloodshed. And yet, if you, you know, look at the history books now and see that period of time between 1990 and 1994 in South Africa, it did change without a bloodbath. Um, and then another story of my own personal, the first time I was in Berlin, I've only been there twice, but the first time was an exchange student and I believe it was 1987 and that was, you know, it was in the midst of the Cold War and going there and there was the big wall and the guards. And I remember we actually, a group of us actually did go into East Berlin as tourists and it was, you could feel that energy. It was, um, you know, everything that they say behind the Iron Curtain. And the second time I went was in very, very early 1990. And if you, if you were around back then, it was November 1989 when the wall actually just, you know, uh, came down. The German government said, hey, you know, we're opening the borders. And that, too, happened without bloodshed. And now, you know, these areas are not perfect. There's still a lot of things to roll out and to heal, um, you know, a, a, around these particular historical events. But... You know, the point is that this, this, this shift, this evolvement, um, you know, the opening up into greater freedom, it happened without a bloody fight. And I think that's the point they're making to, to have me relay these stories is that there's historical precedence now for really kind of miraculous, beautiful shifts in the collective and to happen without you know, huge amounts of suffering. It can happen, it has happened. And what it really takes is, you know, it starts here, it starts here. It starts with visualizing and the believing and the faith, okay? And sometimes what it takes is actually to step out of the system. And, you know, when a critical mass of people just says, we're done with this, you know, <laughs> we're not gonna study war no more. This is really swords into plowshares, and um, and I've seen this recently happening. Um, you know, an individual level. I was just on the phone or on Zoom with a good, great friend of mine um, just yesterday, and this individual has kind of struggled with some scarcity, lots and lots of debt, and had been kind of fighting that. Of you know, I've seen her kind of struggling with this for years and years and years, and. Um, Last, last fall, we went on a little retreat together, uh, just, just she and I, and, and since then she's, she's been in, you know, this is really coming from herself. She's really been giving it up to God and just saying, hey, it's gonna resolve itself. I know it is just focusing on abundance, focusing on just being, you know, doing the things that she's being called to do in the moment. And she said just a couple, just recently, she came into some money unexpectedly, the debt is gone, Whew, it's gone. And this was just like, you know, crushing, but it happened, It, you know, so it's like when, I think the biggest obstacle sometimes to manifesting and especially something as big as like world peace and freedom and sovereignty for all, you know, is this really belief that either it, it can't happen because it's it's just too big and just can't see the way there, or it, um, you know, this this belief in that it has to be difficult. And you know, it doesn't. <laughs> it, it it really doesn't if we just give it to spirit because spirit has a way of just seeing 
what we don't and opening up opening doors it's our faith really does move mountains um so just encouragement to anyone who's feeling discouraged about the state of the world there's so much angelic support and it's really a matter of just shifting vibration shifting that perspective and as more and more of us do that things can open up in amazing ways and it can happen very very quickly Okay, so I'm going to close this video with a little reading for the month of June 2021. And I'm gonna use three decks. One is my Spirit Animal Awareness deck. Another is the Archangel Michael deck. Uh, and the third is the Doors of Love and Light deck. Um, I read a more margin and um, I'm going to, as, Let's see, let's start with an animal deck and just kind of see animal is going to show us a little bit more of the proactive energies that we can do and, um, you know, kind of to give us an idea of maybe what are some constructive things we can do as well as possibly some heads up into what to look out for. So we're going to start there and see what animal comes forward this one oh beautiful look at this it's dove it came up a little bit upside down but i'm going to show it to you this way okay dove is all about peace right it's all about the holy spirit and and bringing that in okay and there may be some resistance to that as i said it came in in reverse but this is really a matter of being aware of it and welcoming opening for that inner peace it starts within it starts within our own hearts right if we want to see peace in the world remember that the manifestation has because it has to happen in the world right it it's a delayed reaction so it starts with the thoughts and as we hold those thoughts and hold them and hold them and hold them and hold them you know um it 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 because we won't necessarily see the outward manifestation immediately. Sometimes we do, but sometimes it can be days, weeks, months, years that we have to hold that thought unwavering. It's a kind of like a test of the universe. It's, it's like we're, it's going to test us just because of the, the way that, you know, it has to roll out into, into physicality it starts here. It, um, the thoughts are going to influence emotions, emotions influence actions, okay? And as you hold that vibration, it affects all living things on the planet, and especially the ones around you, okay? Um, so really, really holding on to that. Okay, and let's follow up. Let's see what Archangel Michael wants to contribute. And while I shuffle this deck, I would like to invite any one of you who feels guided. One of the most powerful things to bring this swords into plowshares vibration into manifestation is to connect with each other, right? To be with like-minded souls because that amplifies the vibration, right? When two or more are gathered, right? When two come together, it amplifies the vibration. So it's more than just double. And the same goes for when you add more. So I, this is why I have called, I just recently started a Patreon, um, kind of like a, where you can support this channel, but on the wolf pack level if you wish to join the wolf pack we actually get together via zoom every week and it's um, been really fun so far uh, we've done a meditation we've done a sacred painting session and it's it's really i feel like it's healing work for on a planetary level as well as for us as individuals all right, this is a beautiful card that came up from Archangel Michael, new beginnings and a fresh start. And this is a call again to, you know, if so many of us have been warriors for lifetimes and we've had to be, right? And th so this is like, okay, you can maintain that warrior energy without entering into the fight, right? Um, if you think again of swords into plowshares, 
And to be a gardener, you kind of have to be a warrior, right? You have to define your space and you've got to weed out the things that don't belong there. And, and you know, it's a very creative, creative act. Sometimes you can let certain plants grow, right? If you feel like it's gonna be beneficial to the whole. Um, but you also have to be very, very diligent and, but you, and also patient, right? But it's not like if you went in there and rampaged over the garden because you saw nothing was growing, <laughs> you know, or um, it, it just doesn't work. So it's like moving into a fresh start if we can ditch the, the kind of the, the sword and the fires and, and all that and move into more of a you know, let's, let's grow something beautiful kind of vibration. It, it will happen. Um, look at, I love this picture where he's kind of just floating above and it looks like he's floating. You would think it's the earth, but it's, it's like this bright sun almost, um, you know, and it could be, there's just a lot of fire happening here and he's just blessing it. Or, you know, there's something about the solar, aspect of um you know that that beautiful evolved solar plexus that's that's dawning on the earth right now okay this is christ consciousness coming into the earth um it's a beautiful thing new beginnings and a fresh start and this is something that we can all really hold in our consciousness at this time and then finally, let's open a door of love and light for June and just calling in beauty, harmony, sovereignty, freedom, truth, peace, love, and joy. Um, okay, and here's the card. It's number 50. Remember, five is this number of change, okay? So I think June is going to be a very, very instrumental month whatever energies are happening right here it's it's really going to assist in accelerating the change that we're moving in remember of course anytime there's change it does feel chaotic and it can feel like a crisis if you maintain that 3d you know from that 3d perspective it can feel like a crisis so whatever is you know the energies of june and we may not see it right in june it may be a delayed reaction but I'm feeling especially with the sun shape, it's going to be like the, the solstice is going to activate something to accelerate change. Um, you know, remember to hold that 5D perspective and especially around the solstice, I'll do another video on that, um, to, to, to really visualize harmony, right, on earth, peace, beauty, joy, abundance, right? I'm feeling also June could be a really, really abundant month or a month that kickstarts a lot of abundance for those who are ready for that. Um, I'm gonna just, just close, let's see. Um, I'm gonna just read in Rita's guidebook around this number 50 car. She's, for her, it's the gift of releasing um, the gift of releasing is a meditation for those moments where you find yourself with energetic debris that you've tried to release over and over again. I think this is very pertinent. You know the stuff doesn't serve your highest good and you'd like it to go once and for all. Open this gift and put it in the box of the, the, uh, the debris that you no longer need in your life. You know, just create a box for all this stuff that you've been hanging on to or has been hanging on to you and just like <laughs> scrape it off into the box. Um, send it back to source to be transmuted into the clean energy of possibilities. There's so much possibility opening up right now. And bring back what you need to create that beautiful future and that beautiful person you desire to be. And I want to add that you really are, right? You really are magnificent be that person you truly are. What needs to be healed, released, balanced, aligned, harmonized, energized, and brought to my awareness for me to be the person I truly am? And she says a portion of that statement comes from the quantum alignment system, EFT tapping sequence by Karen Curry Parker. But um, could be a really, really good month to just kind of really bring into your awareness anything that you realize. It's like, it's time for me to just get rid of it and do the clearing work, right? If you need assistance with that clearing work, I do offer sessions. Uh, they, they, are, they can be pretty, <laughs> um, pretty intense. A lot happens in these sessions. So I'm gonna put the link below. Otherwise, have a beautiful, beautiful month of June and we'll catch you again soon. And remember, it's your birthright to be free. <laughs>